Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to set up source eyes for models. These are the eyes in Source Filmmaker that have the view target that you can move around and the eyes automatically track. It's a really simple setup, but there are a few caveats and a few things you need to know to get it right. So I have here an Ashley model that I adjusted very slightly just so you can see the full steps involved in this. So the first thing you want to do on the model side is you want to come up here and as you can see, you know, the eyes have some bullshit texture on them that I applied. So we're going to come over here and we're going to make sure that we have our eyeball materials. So you want to have an, a material named eyeball left and a material named eyeball right. So I have special characters I made for these just so I know exactly what they are, but they can be pictures of anything you want. As long as the name is correct, that's all that matters. So now we're going to look. So these are IDs 10 for the left and 11 for the right. So then we're going to come over here and select her left eyeball and set it to material 10, which is the left. And then the right eyeball goes to 11, which is the right. Okay, so then we just come over here and we're going to export this as reference Ashley eye tutorial, eye tut. Okay, so I know that's going through and that's exporting. There we go. So then we come over here and we have our QC for her. So as we can see, it's pulling reference Ashley Itot. Okay. And so the important lines are these four and these two. And I'm going to briefly go through and explain what each of these do as far as I can tell. So flex control, eyes range, up, down, and right, left. So if you've played with the eyes category of a model, then you know you have the up, down, and right, left sliders. As far as I can tell, these do that. However, I don't think the degrees, negative 45 to 45, makes a difference. But don't quote me on that. I just keep it at negative 45, 45. That's a Valve standard. And that's what Valve uses in his models, and it seems to work just fine. So next are the eyeball lines. The eyeball lines go in the following components. Of course, first you declare it as eyeball, and you give it a name. This is actually not relevant. You can name this anything you want, platypus. Okay, the bone that it's attached to, and then the X, Y, Z coordinates of the eye. We're going to get back to that in a moment. The name of the material, uh, I believe this value is not used, just keep it at 1. How wall-eyed the model is. This is deprecated, it doesn't really matter what it is, I just keep it pupil right and pupil left. And then the size of the eyeball, which determines how big the iris is. So, we're going to come back and we're going to get these coordinates. So, a lot of people suggest using the program QC Eyes that comes with the source SDK. I personally do not use it. I find that it's clutter, um, clumsy, and cluttered, and it just really abstracts too much away. And in my experience, anyways, half the time it gives you wrong values. So, this is how you do it in Source Filmmaker or uh, rather in 3ds max uh, in blender the values are basically exactly the same so I'm just going to turn on wireframe here so you can see the exact center of one of the eyes so I'm just going to select that and then we're going to come over to move and we want the X and the Z coordinates of this one so that's uh, 1.252 the right eye is going to be negative so negative 1.252 and then the Z coordinate which is 67.726 Okay, and then we're going to come over here and we want to select the center of the eyeball from this direction and get its y coordinate, which is negative 2.076. I'm just going to copy that and paste. That's not paste and paste. And then we just select these without the negative sign and put them there. So that sets up the eyeballs. Next up are the attachments. You need this attachment for where the view target goes. And its coordinates, it goes in this way. So, you know, first of all, you tell it an attachment. The name of the attachment has to be eyes. It has to be eyes. The name of the bone it's attached to and its coordinates in this space. So absolute means it's based off the origin of the model, which means that in this case, we can just grab the Y and the Z coordinates and put them there. The reason for the 0.00, .00 is the view target is going to spawn smack dab between the two eyes and forward. And so, you know, negative 1.252 plus 1.252 sums out to zero. If for some reason you're doing a model where the eyes aren't symmetrical, all you do is you add these two values together and divide them by two, and that gives you this value. 
So now this next one's a bit tricky, so you want to pay special attention to this if you're not used to doing source eyes. And that is the mouth attachment. It, it doesn't make intuitive sense, but Source Filmmaker requires a second attachment for eyes to work correctly. Now, it doesn't have to be mouth. I know for a fact the forward attachment works, and honestly, I think any attachment will work. In fact, we'll test this. We will name this Narwhals. I've never actually tested this. It's going to be a live test. And its position doesn't matter, so I just, you know, just grab it from some random QC that you know has eyes at work and just toss it around. That's all I do is I haven't changed these values in almost three years now. It's, I just copy and paste them around. So now it should be set up. So if we come over here, launch crowbar, and then we come over here, and we come over here to... Um, where is mine? There's mine. Daz 3D, Mass Effect Ashley, and we want iTutorial. Compile. Now it's entirely possible that the eyes won't work. Ooh, what's that? Unknown eyeball bone. Oh, right. So I use Wonder Boy's exporter. And part of what Wonder Boy's exporter needs is it requires the bones to be explicitly visible when you export, otherwise it won't export them. And so I had the head bone and face bones hidden, and so they weren't compiled, and so Studio MDL threw that error saying, hey, I can't find the head bone to attach the eyes to, because it didn't export with them. Shit. Okay. Now, this is an actually real easy fix. All we're going to do is we're going to select just this mesh and we're just going to delete everything that isn't the head. And come over here. Uh, turn off ignore visible edges. There we go. And then we'll just export this. That way we know for a fact it'll export nice and quickly and compile nice and quickly. There we go. So then we come over here and we compile. And then we come over here and we want to load model. Come over here to mass effect. And this will be Okay, I just I just saved over at Ashley ME3. There we go. So we come over here. And in Half-Life Model Viewer. You have the eye, enable eye look enable, and as you can see, the eyes work perfectly. So I'm going to briefly go over some of the settings. The first one I'm going to go over is wall eye. So humans have a natural degree of wall eyedness, which is to say that our eyes don't point directly straight, but they actually go out a little bit. Wall eye is the inverse of cross eye. So you know if your eyes go in, point in towards the center, you're cross eyed. If your eyes go the opposite direction, you're wall-eyed. Humans naturally have about a four degree wall-eyed. So in this particular case, her wall-eyedness is two. Uh, let's make it really extreme. Since we made the model really low quality on just the head, it'll compile really fast. It's getting extremely wall-eyed. And then I can flip this negative sign and make the negative sign be on the right eye and make her extremely cross-eyed. So that's how you can control that, and then if you wanted to, you can even give a character a lazy eye. So you know that's that's a fun thing to play with if you feel like getting creative. I'm just gonna set that back to default. And then second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show off the eye size. So first we're just gonna have this and show what that looks like. And when the eye is uh, too small, it actually starts repeating like that, which looks weird. So if you ever come across that error, check your eye size. Chances are that it's possibly wrong. And then let's just make the eye really big. So this is over twice the actual size it should be. And that's also equally terrifying. Okay, so let's just put this back to what it was, which is 0 0.63, which is standard for most humanoid characters. 0 0.63 is pretty normal. 
Okay, there you go. That's how you do source eyes. Until next time.